Here's Naja Hajj, uh, an ex-thoroughbred racehorse, that because of my job the past, I don't know, it seems like years, but eight or nine months, uh, and then even slightly before that, I haven't had the time uh, to, to do him. And when I say time, uh, it's not just the actions of tacking up, getting on the horse, going around. It's all the... Um, the attitude that you have with the horse and like everything it takes energy not just physical energy and so when your uh, plate is too full you back off uh, if you're getting old like me and um, you know the wisdom of when you were younger and like a bull in the china closet your uh, production or in this case your level of training quality is retarded um, or isn't what it could be so he's been sort of going around eating in the stall out of the stall in the paddock um, saying hi to him as I pass him each day which uh, for those of you um, out there um, as you're doing other horses they it's not a, so much a verbal thing but this horse particularly has known me since I broke him as a a young colt, um, it gives them, I don't know, a peaceful security. So he has no vices, he's, he's not uh, silly. And um, I think partly due to being a C Seattle Slu uh, line, he's um, extremely uh, tolerant and extremely laid back. Uh, so much so that when he's not fit, um, <laughs> he is really lazy. So the times he's gone out into the paddock, he really hasn't used his back. And uh, inevitably, um, he's a huge mover. And huge movers that don't have the top line to respond to the physics of their character over ground, their confirmation, their scope, uh, can end up. Uh, you know chasing their front end because it's like a child running downhill and they can't keep up with their legs so inevitably big movers fall on the forehand here is a round pin probably because of uh, drainage is slightly sloped which I just love for babies or horses that are coming back because as well as handicapping them with the wall to keep their haunches square um, I'm going uphill now and you'll see my arm come out and give him a little bit more allowance over ground because gravity is keeping him on his haunches and as I go downhill I bring his uh, outside hind leg a little bit more to me so he doesn't roll over the front end and try to keep that inside shoulder free uh, again because his lower back muscles um, he's just been playing in the field and bucking and whatnot and basically using uh, his hocks and his shoulders and not really lowering his head and using his uh, top line so for the first 10 to 15 days we're going to be bringing these muscles back and as we do that we we're going to take him in and out of his comfort zone. What I mean by that is it's like a metronome. Big uh, movers, as probably a lot of you already know, um, have this their own innate uh, metronome or, or will to do a certain tempo. And um, to uh, get the muscles in the back up uh, and not you know, uh, thrust it on the forehand, you take them out of tempo slightly. So you hesitate with the hind leg, outside hind leg, um, and this is the left hind leg, which is his better 
of the more athletic of the two and I started to warm him up on this purposely um, later on as he gets more fit I'll w warm him up to the left believe me <laughs> um, but I wanted his confidence and relaxation and uh, so because uh, I'm going to be working first on that lower back um, I start off on the hind leg that he's the most comfortable with uh, again it's not just the physical it's the mental too so as you're bringing along a, a horse certainly older horses because he's had all these muscles before uh, certainly when he was racing um, and he's probably the only <laughs> racehorse that could do pirouettes on the long range <laughs> and shoulder ends and even half passes uh, true ones too um, he has a sense of himself in his memory of what he can physically do so bringing along an older horse or an older Grand Prix horse that's been laid off is I believe in my opinion more of a trick than bringing a young horse through to the upper levels for the first time um, much like a pianist that's been away from the piano for years they'll sit down and I'm speaking of myself <laughs> they'll sit down and your and your mind uh, goes but your fingers don't obey all the time <laughs> so uh, you miss your leaps or your uh, uh, triads um, and your evenness of trills and and scales aren't fluttery like a butterfly so you have to slow yourself down and do patterns and much of the patterns you do in music I guess that's where I got it from but I also got it from uh, a neat Swedish trainer is you borrow uh, pieces of footsteps all in two or three steps do a shoulder out uh, a turn um, on uh, a, a straight turn on a circle to uh, a shoulder in and um, it'll be a matter of steps because certainly at this point I'm just using it as an exercise to reach those muscles and keep his haunches balanced and squared and keeping the impulsion from behind now we're going to the left and you'll see me even more ha have to counter bend him going down the slope as we are now this is the part you might not see on the camera but it's a slight slope in there and the wall really does the rest for me but that right hind has to come under as he's going down the hill and it's almost stepping into the inside foreleg but it inevitably it keeps that inside shoulder free and so you're not stopping the shoulder for him to uh, uh, do the turn and this is more of a, a shoulder out um, which they did used to have in dressage many decades ago I don't know why they took it out but the old masters used it a lot to keep invariably those haunches um, centered in balance with the center of the horse and keep all four legs equal I can feel if he's equal instantly in in my reins whether they're soft or I have a, a straight um, uh, contact because uh, and you probably in riding have felt uh, at one point or another that your left hand had you know 40 pounds in it and the right hand felt like it had two ounces well that's because the uh, four legs are not carrying equal weight and to reach that equal weight you have to bend them uh, to an area where they're relaxed and uh, true in their balance between their four legs um, it's a little bit like whether there's one side of a horse that's longer than the others usually it's on thoroughbred certainly the right hand side of the horse and the left hand side of the horse is uh, a shorter uh, more taut muscles so uh, to keep that right hind underneath and balance him down the hill so he's um, not frazzled by trying to go down the hill and plunging himself um, I slightly uh, make the tempo less so he has more time to step underneath which also by the way the right hind has to just do a bit of a non-new second and it's further underneath to bring about those muscles that he has had once upon a time and up the hill I can let gravity 
and get a little bit more impulsion and maybe go a little ahead of his tempo that he likes. And then invariably going down the hill, before I go down the hill, I start rocking him back. This horse understands a half fault. He understands direct and indirect rain already. So um, a lot of the signals I do, depending on if he's uh, relaxed or on the muscle, um, he uh, understands. So a lot of the rain, when I'm, he is relaxed, you can see a loop and it's just the weight of the rain. As his muscle dynamics get clearer and more succinct, and he rises up in his own on his own and, and drops his haunches and goes on the bit on his own, no side reins. Um, then, of course, I get more direct reins uh, sometimes because, like a ballerina, he's going to have that support, uh, like a ballerina does on the bar, not you know hanging on to my my hands, but supporting the um, velocity or impulsion from behind. Um, as, as I take an older horse up, muscles that, that have uh, receded or, or uh, whatever, they already have memory chips there. All of our muscles have memory chips if you had that muscle brought forth at some point. So um, in, in a matter of, of weeks, he's going to have a lot more support than when you bring along a young horse. A uh, young horse, inevitably, uh, you're making a new, brand new muscle. So you're making that IE computer chip. Well, uh, as we go to the next day, I'll keep you posted and do another podcast. And you can watch his muscle memory wake up with the blood flow and uh, those muscles coming back. Thank you.